Have you ever encountered any invisible creature that has killed millions of humans? Microorganisms, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other unicellular organisms, cannot be seen by the naked eye and are thus invisible creatures. Among microorganisms, viruses like dengue virus are intracellular organisms that always require a host for their replication and development. Dengue viruses have a simple yet complex structure, providing specific characteristics and differentiating them from other microscopic organisms. The basic structure of dengue viruses consists of genetic material like RNA, a capsid or a protein coat that protects genetic material and gives shape to the virus. These viruses look like simple creatures but are culprits behind several deadly diseases that wiped out numerous other living organisms in the past. Let's look at a disease caused by a hemorrhagic fever virus like Ebola, which becomes lethal if not treated promptly and carefully. What is dengue fever? It is a hemorrhagic fever caused by the dengue fever virus Dengue fever virus belongs to the family Flavivirus. It is an arbovirus because it mainly spreads through arthropods such as mosquitoes and ticks. Arthropods are the invertebrate animals that have a rigid external skeleton. Examples of arthropods are mosquitoes, ticks, lice, flies, and fleas. Other arthropod-borne viruses are yellow fever virus, West Nile virus, Zika virus, Omsk hemorrhagic fever virus, chikungunya virus, and Chiasiner forest disease virus. Dengue fever virus contains RNA as its genome and various structural and non-structural proteins. There are five serotypes of the dengue fever virus. Central America, South America, Africa, the Caribbean, a few parts of Asia, and the Pacific Islands are the regions where the dengue fever virus is commonly found. European countries such as Italy, France, Spain, and Croatia have also reported several dengue cases. Approximately 400 million people catch the virus each year. Transmission of dengue fever virus. A female mosquito, Aedes aegypti, serves its role of being an essential vector in the transmission of the dengue fever virus from person to person. Some other species are also known to spread this viral disease at a limited rate, such as Aedes albopictus, Aedes polynesiensis, and Aedes scutellaris. These species of mosquitoes also transmit Zika and chikungunya viruses. Humans and other mammals serve as primary hosts for this virus. Aedes aegypti can be differentiated from other mosquitoes by having a small, dark body and white dots all over the body. These mosquitoes prefer to live in areas with warm climates and dwell near humans. Human to mosquito to human transmission. Playing a single batch of eggs by female Aedes aegypti always requires multiple blood meals. If a person is already infected with the dengue virus, then during a specific period, his blood contains many viruses during infection. This stage is called viremia. When a female mosquito feasts on the person's blood during the viremia stage, the mosquito itself gets infected and serves as a vector for transmitting the disease to other persons. The virus then enters the mosquito spreads inside its body, and eventually reaches its salivary glands within 8 to 12 days after the bite. The mosquito then becomes a source of transmission of the virus. It can infect other healthy individuals by injecting the dengue virus's saliva. Dengue virus has no killing effects on mosquitoes. Mother to fetus transmission. It is also known as maternal transmission. When a pregnant woman is infected with the dengue virus, it can also cause infection in the fetus, leading to low transport of oxygen from mother to fetus, premature birth, and low birth weight. Other modes of transmission, organ transmission and blood transfusion, are ways to transmit the dengue virus among persons. Signs and symptoms. The incubation period ranges from 4 to 10 days. In most cases, Patients show mild symptoms or no symptoms. Few people tend to have severe viral hemorrhagic fever. The dengue infection has three stages, febrile, critical, and recovery. The febrile phase consists of a high-grade fever of 40 degrees Celsius, pain behind the eyes, rash, nausea and vomiting, and muscle and joint pain. Therefore, dengue is also referred to as breakbone fever. Rashes occur two to three days after the first symptom in almost 50 to 80 percent of the cases. This phase takes two to seven days to resolve. Most people start to recover after the febrile phase. But in some people, it proceeds to the critical step in which excessive fluids accumulate in the patient's chest and abdominal cavity due to the discharge of plasma from blood vessels, and eventually, blood volume starts to decrease. Bleeding occurs from the nose, gums, and digestive tract due to a decreasing count of platelets. 
This critical phase often results in dengue shock syndrome in 5% of the cases. This is called dengue hemorrhagic fever or severe dengue. The next phase is the recovery phase, lasting from two to three days, in which the leaked out fluids are reabsorbed by blood vessels. Dengue patients feel lethargic for some weeks. Some other conditions are associated with dengue fever, which affects other body organs and their function. Heart and liver infections are also rare complications of dengue fever. Diagnosis of dengue fever. Several diagnostic methods are used to diagnose dengue fever virus in a patient's blood sample. These tests may be serological, molecular, and antigen detection tests. Serologic detection of dengue virus. Several types of antibodies are produced during infection and start their action to neutralize the pathogen that has invaded the human body. Among those antibodies, IgM antibody is produced in considerable amount after four to five days from the appearance of the first symptom and remain in the stream for about 12 weeks. Therefore, detecting the virus through the Macaulisa test, which stands for IgM antibody capture enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, is relatively more straightforward. This method uses serum or cerebrospinal fluid samples. The test is run in a microtiter plate already coated with anti-human IgM antibodies. Suppose a serum sample containing IgM antibodies against dengue virus is poured into the container. In that case, the antibodies will bind to the already coated anti-human IgM antibodies. Thus, no agglutination occurs, confirming a positive result for the presence of dengue virus in the blood. Dengue virus antigen detection NS1 protein refers to non-structural protein one of the dengue virus, and it is present in the patient's blood. NS1 tests are sensitive and are suggested within seven days of the infection onset. Serum, plasma, or blood can also be used in this test. This test employs rapid test kits or cassettes for NS1 detection. Specimen containing NS1 antigen binds to the gold antibody as the reaction proceeds. This antigen antibody complex will bind with dengue NS1 antibody already coated on the membrane. This will give a dark pink to purple color, which indicates a positive test. Besides serologic and antigen detection tests, real-time PCR is also a practical approach to detecting RNA of the dengue virus in patient samples. PCR and dengue NS1 detection tests give high precision results during the first seven days of the infection onset. Treatment. There are no specific antiviral drugs designed to treat dengue infection, but various pain relievers and antipyretics are suggested to alleviate the severe pain in joints and headaches. Besides this, supportive care is also recommended to keep patients calm and less perplexed. Supportive care includes staying hydrated and maintaining sustainable body fluid volume, taking acetaminophen to reduce pain and body temperature, take a bath with lukewarm water, do not take anticoagulant drugs like aspirin and ibuprofen because they dilute the blood and increase the risk of blood leakage. Patients having infection under the febrile phase should avoid mosquito bites to avoid the further spread of dengue. Vaccine against dengue fever virus. Denvaxia, a vaccine product by Sanofi, is suggested to people who have already gone through dengue infection once because catching dengue infection from another serotype can initiate severe dengue and cause dengue hemorrhagic fever. Therefore, administering the vaccine to people who never had a dengue infection can cause severe dengue upon catching the dengue virus for the first time. Prevention. Use insect repellents that contain DEET, N, and diethylmetatoluamide in an effective concentration against repelling mosquitoes and ticks. Fully cover your body, especially when going out in the evening. Discard contained water sources such as buckets and tubs, as 80s prefer these places to lay eggs. Keep doors and windows closed in the morning and evening or night. If you are sleeping outdoors, using a mosquito net is an effective way to prevent mosquito bites. Avoid traveling to the areas where dengue is common, especially when you are pregnant. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. And as always, stay curious and keep exploring.